the UK's reputation as a credible international security player took a real knock in the years after 2010 with the cuts in capability as a result of the 2010 SDSR and the Syria vote in 2013. And I think the events at the end of 2015 uh, have gone some way to repairing the damage done on those two fronts. Uh, the SDSR uh, it, last year exceeded expectations in terms of capabilities and the par Parliament's vote in the dying days of 2015 on Syria also had a positive effect in that regard. But these improvements in the UK's reputation uh, come at precisely the time when Western military intervention more generally is in a moment of crisis, particularly in Syria, where although airstrikes, I think, are doing some good, they're by no means central uh, to the process of coming to some resolution uh, of the problems in Syria. As we've moved away from large-scale stabilization operations of a sort we've had in Afghanistan and Iraq, the cost of military intervention have declined, but so also has the ability of intervention to make a strategic difference. So that powers that are prepared to commit forces on the ground, like Iran, uh, are making more difference than those such as ourselves who are not. And I think one of the consequences of that is uh, that we're, I think, most unlikely to see a political resolution of the war in Syria. That's, I think, likely to continue through much of the coming year. And as a result, the acute migration crisis and the acute uh, humanitarian crisis uh, facing Syria and as a result facing Europe will continue through this year. And that's not a good time for the UK to be holding a referendum in its membership of the European Union. In the end, uh, once David Cameron completes his negotiations and declares victory, as I'm sure he will do, uh, then British politics will be dominated by the referendum until that vote is over. And we should be in no doubt as to the consequences, that, that the consequences of that referendum would be very serious indeed were the British people to vote uh, for leaving. It would not be the end of the world, but it would, I think, mark a decisive turning point in Europe as a project, a European project, which was established after the end of World War II, already in significant crisis. But if one of its three major states were to walk away, then the whole of Europe, I think, would be faced with uh, almost an existential crisis in, in relation to the concepts which many of us had thought had been established way back in the 1950s and then would be thrown into the melting pot again. And it, it, we shouldn't be under any illusions that the UK leaving the European Union would simply leave the other countries proceeding as before. The reality is populism, nationalism is a growing force across the European Union. I think a, a UK decision to walk away would have pretty substantial consequences for other European countries with results I think we can't foresee.